Uh, it's great to be here at Rails today. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here showcasing our latest stuff. Latest thing to arrive is the decorated LMS inspection saloons, which are about to go into production. Um, there's 11 different liveries on these, uh, ranging from LMS through to EWS, privatisation era. Um, got, some of the, got some of the pretty ones here. So we've got uh, BR Crimson and Cream, Scott Rail, which is slightly different from the others because it's got uh, B4 bogies on, like the real thing. Uh, obviously, they've got a really nice intercity livery and blue and grey, which will be the one that uh, will probably be the most popular, I guess. Um, and they're about to go into production, should be out back end of the summer. Okay, in all gauge, um, we've got some samples of some of the locos that are either in production at the moment or due out later this year. Uh, we've got class 20s, which are on the way now and will be in shops in sort of June, July, something like that. Um, we're, it's a rerun. Uh, of both versions, so you've got disc head code and sent head code versions. Um, these are a couple of the disc head code ones, and they'll be the standard liveries, sort of BR Blue, BR Green, um, and a couple of specials as well. And then the next, actually, the next thing to arrive in Orgage will be the split head code Class 37s. They're on the boat at the moment and should be here in May or June. Um, again, standard, fairly standard liveries, blue, large logo, rail freight. Um, Dutch, uh, EWS, DRS, so a nice broad range of attractive and popular liveries. Um, and that 37 has been upgraded from the previous ones we've done in that it's got the cutaway buffer beams for the later period, but it's also got our new plug and play DCC interface, uh, room for a speaker, better lighting, uh, independently switched cab lights and tail lights, things like that. So it's a, it's a real upgrade on that from previous 37s. Then looking a bit further ahead in, in old gauge, we've got the Class 24s. So you've got the skinhead version, if, uh, if that's what you want to call it, without the head code boxes. And you've got the later version with the head code boxes on. This is the uh, Scottish region version with the twin headlights for the far north line. Uh, they're coming in separately, so the, the skinhead versions will come first. Uh, probably in at the end of this year or maybe early 2025 and then a, a few months later the um, head code box versions will come separately and you've got a re again a good mix of liveries BR green, BR blue um, ranging through from when they were introduced in the late 50s through to 1980-ish um, and we think uh, yeah the reaction to those has been really good we think they'll be very popular. So we've also got the Peak, uh, Class 45, which is the second variant of the Class 45 we've done. And it's the version with the, uh, the later refurbished ends with the seal beam headlights. This again has been upgraded from the original model we did. It's got the plug and play DCC interface. It's got better lighting where it can be the cab lights, tail lights can all be individually switched. Um, it's got improved detail and there's three different versions on this. So there's the Class 45O, which is a steam heat one. There's a 45-1, the ETH version, electric train heating. And then you've got the final version, with the, which is the, with the square headlight on, which is as they were when they were withdrawn. Um, and they'll be here, uh, uh, sort of back end of this year, fourth quarter. Also due out this year, we've got um, Mark II coaches in all gauge. Uh, now this is a huge range of new vehicles. There's four different vehicle types, brake first, brake second open, corridor first and uh, second open um, across lots of different liveries, blue and grey, regional railways, Scott Rail, Provincial, Transpennine, West Coast Railways, there's actually in total there's 28 different models um, across the four versions and these are going to be, um, well they open up a huge range of new possibilities for all gauge modellers. They complement lots of different locos in our all gauge range such as the class 45 that we just looked at, 24s, 25s, 37s, um, they, as I said, they open up a huge range of new possibilities for, for layouts and trains, train formations, things like that. Um, probably worth a closer look if you come around here you can see the interior. The production models of these will have fully decorated interiors, this is a, a pre-production one, but you can see the level of detail with the separate seats, separate tables, the roof is magnetic so you can easily get the roof off to put passengers in. You can also drop a, a lighting strip in there 
so it's easy to add extra, lots of extra detail if that's what you want to do. And they'll be out September, October. They're about to go into production. So next thing in O-Gage is something that people have been waiting quite a long time for, I think, is the Class 122. Uh, they're just about to go into production as well. Um, this is a final factory decorated sample of the Gloucester rail car version, which is the 122. We're also doing the 121 and we're doing the three car DMU, the 117 and they should all be out uh, in a few months. Um, again, we've gone to a lot of detail on these. We've got fully decorated interiors, really nicely decorated cab interiors, uh, interior lighting, um, got a really nice, reliable motor bogey on this, runs very smooth runner. It's shared with our uh, class 128, which people remember, the parcels rail car. It's a nice single car train that can fit on it, any size layout. Um, and they'll be out later this year. Continuing our gauge, we've got some um, really unusual bits, perhaps, perhaps a bit slightly less mainstream, but could still be really popular. Um, first one is our little 48DS Ruston industrial shunter, which is the probably the smallest loco you'll you'll ever get in our gauge. I would have thought um, this tiny little thing is due out in the autumn, and it's diecast construction, so it's really heavy and it's really smooth runner, very reliable, and that'll be out in five or six different liveries in the autumn. We're really pleased with that, it's very, very cute. And it's a really good price as well, it's uh, less than 200 pounds, which is a great entry, entry level point for all gauge. On a slightly larger uh, size scale, we've got our class 153, which uh, at the, real, the real thing is 23 meters long, so you can see, see the size of it compared to the 48DS. Um, and again, this is a, a perfect single car train that you can have on any size of layout really in, in all gauge um, and it's taking all gauge ready to run modeling forward a few years into the 1990s um, which is a period that's growing in where interest is growing the sectorization period where you can have 37s 20s 47s things like that and you can have a lot of the modern liveries that ran until recently sort of northern great western um, with there's lots of colourful, attractive liveries to go on this. Um, and we think it's going to be really popular. Um, and as well as all that, the, there's loads of functions in this for the people who want DCC lighting and sound and things like that. You've got uh, saloon interior lighting, cab lights, um, the door locking indicator lights uh, light up in orange. And then when they do, the door button lights, uh, door buttons light up as well in red. So, uh, and they're all on separate functions, so um, it's going to be a really attractive um, model with lots of play value. Okay, so moving over to rolling stock in O-Gage, we've got uh, the first sample of our Southern Utility Van. So this is going to be produced as, uh, this is the PMV version, the Parcels and Miscellaneous Van with the fixed ends. We're also going to do it as the CCT with the end doors. Um, this, these vans were built by the 100 by the Southern Railway and into BR days. Uh, and they were used all over the country, not just on the Southern. Um, this is the first ready to run model in o Gage. We think it's gonna be really popular. It's gonna be available in Southern Railway Green, uh, BR Green and Maroon, um, BR Blue obviously, and then lots of departmental liveries as well. And that'll be out in spring 2025, all being well. Um, but yeah, we think that's gonna be a really popular vehicle. Moving on to something else in Old Gage, uh, got the Class 02 diesel shunter, which obviously has been um, in the pipeline for quite some time, but they're just about to go into production. Uh, we'll, have, we'll be showing deco samples very soon in BR green, BR blue, industrial liveries. Uh, it's a really handsome little shunter, can be used on uh, layouts of any size, from a shunting plank to a, a big exhibition layout. We think, again, we think this is going to be really popular just because it's such a handsome thing um, and it's really versatile. And then next, we move on to double O and the biggest, most powerful loco, steam loco uh, ever to run in Britain, which is the LNERU One Garrett. Um, as people will probably know, this um, was the Woodsboro Banker in South Yorkshire near Barnsley. Uh, and it was only there was only one ever built, but it was enormously powerful. Ran for 30 odd years banking coal trains up the Woodsboro Bank, 
as you can see from the parts that are laid out here, there's a lot of die cast bits in this, which in, uh, increases the weight. It's going to make it a really give it a real quality feel uh, and make it a huge heavy hauler like the real thing was. Um, this is the first sample of the tooling, so there's still some tweaks to be done with it, but we're really pleased with the progress so far and the reaction to it has been incredible. Um, yeah, look out for some videos of it in the next couple of months, um, doing its stuff, pulling heavy trains, because uh, we'll do some new samples very shortly. Okay, while we're looking at uh, 00 steam locos, we've got the LNER uh, O2, uh, Gresley O2. Um, again, these have been in the pipeline for quite a while, but they're in production now, and we're hoping to get them at the back end of the summer or early autumn. Lots of different new varieties on this one with the Gresley cab and the uh, sorry, the Great Northern Cab and the Great Northern Tender, which we haven't produced before. There's 12 different locos coming out in different liveries. Um, Great Northern, LNER, British Railways, um, covering an enormous range of small variations in things like cabs, tenders, boilers, smoke box. Um, and there's a lot of input. People will probably remember the original Gresley O2 that we did a few years ago. Um, this new model has a lot of improvements over that, um, things like um, areas where the, the older model was perhaps a little bit weak, things like um, handrail knobs and things like that. We've gone from plastic to turn brass handrail knobs. We've improved the motion, uh, improved the coupling between the tender and the loco to make that more robust. Um, it will run more reliably. The samples we've tested have been uh, really positive, really really reliable runners so um, we think that's going to be a big step up from the previous batch and um, I think it will fill a hole in the market for double O heavy goods locos. Um, sticking with double O's we've got the uh, something that a lot of, I know a lot of people are looking forward to which is the class 104 DMU these are coming out really well these are uh, pre-production deco samples in obviously decorated as uh, a Manchester Blackpool set with the white stripe and as um, an early BR green set with the speed whiskers. These are probably the most complicated and sophisticated double O model we've ever produced in terms of lighting and features and things like that. Um, you only need one decoder if you're running in DCC mode and that controls all the lighting right the way through and you've got uh, the lighting functions are cab lights, head code panels, uh, destination blinds, uh, saloon interior lights, and then headlamps and tail lights as well, all on separate functions. Um, and they can all be controlled from one decoder in the brake vehicle. And then it's wired right through. So you've got, it's very simple to set up. Uh, all, the, all the motor cars have got speakers, factory fitted speakers. So conversion to, to DCC sound is as simple as just dropping a sound decoder in. The bodies are held on with magnets, so it's easy to get inside to put passengers uh, in, or if you want to add extra detail, um, it's really easy. And you can do that without risking the fragile underframe detail, which is always an issue on DMUs. Um, the pre-sales on these have been, the pre-orders are, are uh, tremendous, so they're obviously going to be very popular. Um, and we've got a good selection of liveries from original BR Green, a couple of BR Blue ones, um, Network South East, and we've got the ScotRail Mexican Bean, which has proved to be enormously popular on pre-orders uh, and will probably be sold out before the stock actually arrives. Um, we think that's going to be a, a big seller and uh, we're very pleased with how it's come out. Turning to electrics now in double O, we've got the Class 86s, the latest samples of those. Got the 86.4, uh, there's going to be a rerun of those. Uh, which is going to come out in the summer. And there's uh, Intercity Mainline, Network South East, there's a BR Blue one, and there's going to be some more new 86Os as well, a rerun of the original batch. And then after that, uh, we're working on the Class 86.2, which is yet another variation of the 86. You've got two different versions on this with the later one with the headlight and the TDM cables, and then the earlier one without the sort of later paraphernalia and they'll be released in early 2025 again in a range of liveries blue intercity virgin anglia um, 
and obviously the 86 twos were probably the most popular variant, uh, the most widely used, and it's the one that we get asked for the most. So we've um, catered for that, and it gives us a lot of potential for lots of liveries because they've carried dozens of liveries over the years, and lots of little detail variations that we've built in. Two different pantographs, um, fire extinguisher bottles, radio aerials, um, differences on the body, including cab door handles, things like that. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, new stuff on the 86.2, and we're looking forward to getting them out and uh, showing people what it can do. Okay. So the next thing to arrive in uh, stockists from Hellion uh, imminently is the rerun of the Wagon and Machine and Bow diesel rail buses. Now we've produced these before, uh, but that was about 10 years ago, and we've had a lot of requests to, to bring them back. Um, so these will be available any time in a range of liveries, BR Green obviously, um, and then we've got the Technical Centre, RTC red and blue one, and then we've got uh, an earlier 1960s test vehicle uh, in this unusual sort of brown and yellow colour. Um, and they're the same spec as the previous ones, 21 pin decoder interface, interior lights, uh, really heavy chassis for good reliable running. Uh, they're an excellent little thing for, again, for layouts of any size. Um, and uh, they'll be available in late April. So just to finish off, we'll talk about some rails exclusive that have been produced by Hellion over the last year or two. Um, we've got the North Eastern Railway ES1 electric loco, which is a beautiful little thing. Uh, that's produced in between, as a cooperation between Hellion rails and locomotion models. Um, it's a really stunning piece of work. Next is another North Eastern Railway, an unusual vehicle, uh, the petrol electric rail car, um, as you can see preserved at uh, MC. Again, quite an unusual vehicle, but a really beautiful model, very nice, very nicely executed. Um, and again, the, the last few of those are available from Rails now. Um, next one down is the ES1 again, but in BR colours. And then moving along the line is the most recent release uh, of Rails exclusives. That's the um, 18,100, the Metrovic gas turbine, which is also available as in its later form as the rebuilt um, E2001 electric loco. Um, again, this is a, a really nice piece of work. It's come out very well. Um, it's turned out to be a beautiful model and uh, all three versions are available now. Okay, so I hope that's given you a really good overview of what we've got in the pipeline and what's coming out over the next few months. It's all available to pre-order now from Rails, so uh, check out the links uh, in the video below.